Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Fall Virtual Excel Academy by APH. I'm Leanne. I am so happy to have you join us today. This is one of our days where we focus on our students who might have some multiple disabilities, but you are all welcome to join us. Feel free to drop in the chat who you are and where you're from. I would love to say hi to you. Again, as everybody's getting in, I'm welcome, welcoming you to APH's Virtual Excel Academy. And today we focus on students with multiple disabilities. Welcome, welcome. Again, you can feel free to drop in the chat who you are and where you're from. Hello, Susie from Indiana. Oh, dreary day. This day, our lesson will get a smile on your face. Hello, Thunder Bay, Ontario. That sounds like they have the dreary day with thunder in their name. Hello, New Jersey, glad to have you. As you get into the room, I'm welcoming you to APH's Virtual Excel Academy. Today, we're focusing on students with multiple disabilities, but you are welcome to stay and enjoy the stories. Hello, Utah and New Jersey, glad to have you with us. And I am now going to turn it over to Paige. Paige is our instructor today. Take it away, Paige. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Paige and I'll just introduce myself really quick. So I am a teacher of the deaf blind from Utah and I'm currently teaching at Utah schools for the deaf and blind. I teach a preschool class. So three and four year olds who have multiple disabilities as well as deaf blindness. And I'm so excited to be here today to share an accessible story time with all of you and kind of talk about and show how I bring literacy to life for my students who have um, multiple impairments. So it looks like, I'm looking at the chat right now, it looks like we have a couple TVIs, staff. Um, I can't tell if we have kids in yet, but totally fine. Again, like Leanne said, parents or caregivers, friends, family who are with the kids, it's fine if you're busy um, and can't come into the chat and say anything, but I'm just excited to have everyone here. So the majority of our lesson today is gonna be just kind of walking through an accessible story time. So a multi-sensory story time, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means and why it works for our kids with multiple impairments. Um, and so teachers, parents, feel free to throw questions or comments in the chat and I will try to get to them as we go along. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get started. I wanted to kind of open up by talking about just kind of what a traditional story time can be like for those of us who have multiple disabilities. I think that it can actually be pretty boring. Um, if we don't have visual access to the pictures, then we have to rely only on our hearing. And if there's a lot of words in the story that we might not understand, um, what happens then? How much of the story are we really comprehending? Are we really taking in? Um, what if the person reading the story is speaking in monotone? So they just sound the same the entire time. They don't change their tone of voice. They don't change their inflection. I would say that in that case, it's pretty unlikely that our students or our kids are gonna be leaving that story time remembering very much, if any, of what was just read out loud. So when I'm planning a story time or any kind of literacy activity for my students, um, we want to introduce new concepts. So today we're going to learn some new concepts. We're going to learn some new vocabulary words and we're going to sequence the story. So kind of put it in order and we're going to do this in a way that really brings the characters to life and shows us more about what our characters do, how they move, how they act. And that being said, I see in the chat that Aaron is ready for the story. So let me show you the book we're going to read today. 
So this book is called, sorry, there's a little reflection on the screen. Let's see if I can turn my brightness down. That helps at all. Okay, so this is called Big Pumpkin. Hmm, I wonder why I chose a story about a pumpkin today. Let's think. So I know that the month is October. So in October, we have a holiday. And it's not Christmas, it's not Thanksgiving. I'll give you a hint. The holiday is a special day where we all get to dress up and pretend to be someone different. Does anyone know what holiday I'm talking about? So it's in October. We get to pretend to be something different. We might wear a costume. Hmm. Okay, Abigail says Halloween. Abigail, you are correct. Thank you for participating. So you're right. In October, we have Halloween. And on Halloween, we get to wear costumes and dress up. Sometimes we dress up like something we might see in real life. So you might be a police officer or a cowboy or a cat or an animal. But sometimes we dress up or put on a costume that is of something imaginary. So something that's not real, that you don't see in real life, but you might read about in a book. So let's take a look. Before we start reading, we're gonna take a little picture walk through our book and figure out who our characters are today. Teacher Paige, this is Robin, and I see that Ashley has raised her hand. So we can give permission to her to let her speak. And I think Leanne has already done it. So Miss Paige, I think we might have a little uh, message from Ashley. Okay, Ashley, go ahead. Your mom can help you. You can try holding down the space bar or hitting control A. Wait a minute, it's probably alt A. Alt A, excuse me. There you go. It must be ha Halloween then. It is, you are right. It's almost Halloween. Oh. Thank you Can't so wait. much. Wait, sorry. Uh oh. Okay, so we're gonna start our picture walk and let's see who we can find in our story. So in this picture, I see our first character. Does anyone know who this is or what this is a picture of? So I'm going to describe, for those who can't see, there's a long, tall, pointy hat, straggly red hair. A green face that has a really long nose and a long chin. They're watering the garden and they have green hands with long fingernails. And they're wearing what looks like a black dress or cape. That is right. And I see in the chat that Evan says a witch. You are right, Evan. And Abigail says this is a witch. It's a witch, so that's our first character. So I'm gonna put the word witch up on our board. So it's W-I-T-C-H, spells witch. And we have a picture of a witch. She has a green face and big eyes and is wearing a pointy black hat. So there's character number one, is our witch. Okay, let's see who we have next. Hmm. Okay, so this isn't gonna be a who, this is a what. So what do we see in this picture? So this picture, the sky is dark. There's big black clouds, looks like nighttime. I can see our witch again, standing next to a big round orange plant. And this plant has a stem, a green stem coming out of the top. 
with a long green vine that's going into the ground. So let's think of something that we might see on Halloween that's big and round and a plant. Okay, Evan, you are just going so quick. You're right, this is a pumpkin. So our next object in the story or character is our pumpkin. So we'll put the word pumpkin up on our board. I wonder what the witch is going to do with this pumpkin. Hmm. When I have a pumpkin on Halloween, I might decorate it. I might carve a face in it to turn it into a jack-o'-lantern. I do that on Halloween. I see that Aaron paints his pumpkin. I love painting pumpkins. So I wonder if the witch in our story is going to paint her pumpkin or make a jack-o'-lantern out of her pumpkin. I don't know. Okay, we're ready to look at our next picture. And remember, this is just our picture walk. So we're gonna read our story at the end, but right now we just wanna see who and what is in our story to kind of get our brains going. Okay, so I'm holding up our next picture. When I see Abigail likes to put her pumpkin outside on the porch, it's a great idea. Then you can show everyone what you did. So in this picture, I see our witch again. I see a part of the orange pumpkin, but next to the witch is a character who is flying in the sky. He's white and almost see-through. He has big black eyes and a big black mouth. I don't see any legs. He's just kind of wispy on the bottom and he's floating in the air. Hmm. Does anyone know what this character is called or who this is? He's white, floating in the air. Big black eyes. Okay, Aaron says a spirit. I love that word. And Abigail says a friendly ghost. Abigail, I really like that observation. He looks friendly to me too because he is smiling. And Evan says he sees a ghost. Okay, I think you're right. Our next character is a ghost. So I have the word ghost, spelled G-H-O-S-T, and we're gonna put him up on our board too, just so we're keeping track of the characters that we find. Oh, and Evan says this is his favorite book. I'm so glad to hear that. This is my favorite book too. Okay, we have our next character. Let's take a look at the picture. So this character looks really tall. He is taller than the pumpkin. He's taller than the witch. And he might even be taller than the ghost, even though the ghost is floating in the air. So he is kneeling down and this character looks like a man. He has black hair and thick eyebrows, a big pointy nose. And I see something that might give us a clue coming out of his mouth. So I want you to look at this character's teeth. They are extra long and extra sharp. He's wearing a long black cape. So who could this be? Do we have any guesses? Hmm, sharp teeth. A man with a big nose, black hair. <gasps> Evan, you are so good. This is a vampire. A vampire, that's our next character. So I'll show you our word card. Spells vampire, V-A-M-P-I-R-E. And we see our little vampire. Oh, Aaron says he's kind of scary. I agree. 
I think he's kind of scary too. I don't know what I, how I feel about those sharp white teeth. So Abigail's asking a question. She wants to know if the vampire is nice. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can find any clues from our picture. So I see that he is kind of smiling. So I could guess that at least he's happy. But I don't know if he's nice or not. But when we read our story, I think we'll find out. Okay, we just have a few more. Okay, our next character. This one might be kind of tricky. So this character looks like the biggest one of all. It almost looks like a person, but I can't see their face because this character is wrapped up in what looks like white bandages. Huh. So a tall, maybe a person, wrapped in white bandages. Hmm. Who might this be? Or what is this called? It can be kind of tricky, because remember, we don't see many of these things in real life. We might see them on TV or in a book or on Halloween if someone's dressed up. <gasps> okay, Evan, you are correct. It's a mummy and Abigail wondered if it's a mummy. You're right, this is a mummy, a mummy. So that's our character. So let's see. We have one more. Okay, so in this picture, the next character I want you to look at is flying up in the sky. It's still nighttime, the sky is dark, the clouds are big and black, there's stars in the sky, and this character is really small compared to everybody else. It has kind of long wings, they're black and pointy, it looks like this character might be an animal and its body is furry with long black wings and it's flying at night. Can anyone guess what animal this is? Hmm. Okay, Aaron and Annabelle say that is a bat. And you are right, this is a bat. So I think this is our only character that's an animal. And let's see, let's count how many characters we have so far. So I'm gonna point one, two, ghost is three, vampire four, mummy is five, and the bat is six. So we have six characters in our book, okay? Some of our characters are things you would see in real life, but some are imaginary. So can any of my friends in the chat tell me which of our characters in the story are things you would see in real life? So real characters. Hmm. And I'm gonna try to bring our list up a little closer. And I'll read it one more time. So we have a witch, a pumpkin, a ghost, a vampire, a mummy, and a bat. Which characters are real? that you could see in real life. Okay, Evan says we see pumpkins in real life. Yes, Aaron says pumpkin too, you are correct. So we'll definitely see a pumpkin in real life. Abigail says pumpkin. Do you see anything else on the list that you might see in real life? What about a vampire? Have any of you seen a vampire in real life? 
Has a vampire ever come to your house? You seen a vampire walking on the street with his big, sharp, white teeth? Ms. Page, we have, if you want to listen, we have a student that's going to give you an answer. This is, uh, this is Abigail. Okay, Abigail. What else do you see that's real? A bat. A bat. Good job. I agree. I think you could see a bat in real life and you could see a pumpkin in real life. But I don't think we would see a witch or a ghost or a vampire or a mummy in real life. Or at least I hope I don't see one in real life. Okay, so we've listed our characters and it's kind of tricky, especially with the characters that are imaginary. And if we can't see the pictures of what they look like or we might not fully understand from a verbal description what they look like or how they might act, Another way that we can learn this concept is through movement. So we are gonna do a little bit of Halloween yoga before we read our story. And I like to do this just because it's fun, it gets us moving. We know that moving kind of helps turn on our brain, helps us learn, and just makes it more concrete so we can look or learn about what our characters are really like because I want to know. So I'm going to move my board out of the way and if everyone who wants to do the yoga can stand up and get in a comfortable place. You don't have to have a mat or anything but um, just somewhere kind of open where you can move up and down. For my friends who are in wheelchairs or are just feeling really comfy, seated, all of our poses can also be adapted um, for whatever position you feel like being in. So we'll kind of talk about those adaptations as we go. I just need to scoot my camera back so you guys can see me. And I am going to stand up and... Our first character that we found in our story was a witch. So we are going to do a witch pose. So I'll show you a picture first. And I just have a cartoon drawing of a little girl who looks like she is sitting in the air with her arms up. So this is our witch pose. So we're all just gonna stand up. Let's make sure, I gotta tilt that up a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna stand up. When I do yoga, I like to start by taking some deep breaths. So can we breathe in through our nose, like we're smelling a flower? And then we're gonna breathe out through our mouth, like we're blowing out candles on a birthday cake. So to do the witch pose, we are going, to, I'll turn to the side so you can see me. I'm gonna pretend like there is a chair behind me. There isn't, but I'm gonna pretend like I'm sitting in a chair. So my knees are bending. My feet are about hip distance apart. So just spread your feet out a little bit. Pretend like you're sitting in your chair and we're gonna lift our arms straight in front of us and up at an angle. Or if you're feeling ambitious, you can put them all the way up so your shoulders are up by your ears, okay? So we're sitting with our arms up and then we can reach our arms down, pretend to hold a broom because witches ride on a broom and kind of sway our body back and forth. So left to right, I'm just kind of swaying, bending my knees left to right like I'm a witch flying on a broom. Okay. So we did our witch. Does anyone remember any other characters that we found in our story? So we did witch. You can write it in the chat or say it out loud. Let's see. Any who was another character in our story? Okay, Abigail says the mummy. Good job, Abigail. That's really good remembering. We are gonna do the mummy pose next. So now you can't see my feet, but I'm gonna spread my feet out really wide while I'm standing, okay? 
and I'm gonna reach my arms up in the air. So I, they're at a angle or kind of a slant. So my arms are up and it's making a V shape around my head. So my legs are spread wide, my arms are up. And this pose is kind of like a mummy because mummies are tall and stiff. So stiff is a word that means it doesn't move very much or it's hard to move. And when I think about our mummy, I remember that the mummy was wrapped in a lot of bandages. Now I'm gonna imagine what it would feel like if my whole body, so from my head to my feet, was wrapped in bandages. I think I would be pretty stiff too. It would be hard to move like that. So when we're doing our mummy pose, we're trying to stay really still. So our neck is straight, our arms are straight up in the air, and our legs are straight, standing on the ground. We'll take one deep breath in through our nose like you're smelling a flower, and then breathe out like you're blowing out a candle. Okay, let's see who else remembered a character from the story. Okay, Evan says a ghost. Good memory, you're right. Let's do the ghost pose next. So for the ghost, we are going to kneel. That means we stand on our knees. So we're gonna get back down on the ground. So now I'm kneeling. My knees are flat on the ground. And I'm going to reach out to the side with both arms. So I am putting my two arms up in the air, only to the height of my shoulders. So my arms are straight out beside me. And I remember in the picture of the ghost from our book, he looked like he was flying in the air. So can we move our arms side to side like we are flying or floating in the air like a ghost? So we'll move side to side. I put my right arm down closer to the ground. While my left arm is up, I can wiggle my fingers. Now I can put my left arm down close to the ground. Right arm is up, wiggle my fingers. So I'm like a ghost flying through the sky on Halloween night. Okay, I see that Aaron has a comment to share. He said that during one Halloween party, he got wrapped up in toilet paper to be a mummy. That is so funny, Aaron. What did you think about that? Did you like being wrapped up in toilet paper? Did it make you feel kind of stiff? Like you couldn't move, like our mummies kind of stuck in one spot. I think that's like a really fun Halloween game. I might do that this year. Okay, and Erin also remembered that we have a bat in our story. You are right. So I don't know if any of my friends know this, but bats sleep upside down. They hang from the top of a cave sometimes, or maybe from a tree branch, with their little feet hooked on the cave or on the tree branch, and their heads hang down. They wrap themselves up in their wings and sleep upside down. So to pretend like we're a bat, we're gonna go back into standing, so let's all stand up, and we are going to bend at our waist. So that means we bring our upper body down and kind of bring our hands close to the ground. And I want you to relax your neck. Have your neck kind of hang heavy. And you can keep your arms straight to the ground or you can wrap them up around your shoulders just like bats do when they sleep. So we are hanging like a bat who's going to sleep. 
and you can sway side to side if that feels good. Relax your neck, let your head hang heavy. We'll take a deep breath in and out. Okay, I'm gonna slowly let my arms release and come back up to standing. Feel the stretch in my back and roll my shoulders. And that was our back pose. And for anyone who's not standing, you can do all of these poses sitting, just moving your arms or your head or your neck. Okay, so we have two more yoga poses to do for our last two characters. First, we're gonna do the, our vampire pose. So this one will come back into standing. And while we stand up, I wanna see if we remember anything about the vampire that we saw in the picture in our book. I remember that the vampire was really tall. He looked taller than the pumpkin, taller than the witch, and taller than the ghost. So for this pose, we're going to be tall and strong like a vampire. So we're gonna leave our arms down by our sides, straighten out our legs so we're standing really tall, roll our shoulders back, and then we can bring our arms up above our head, bend our elbows if we can, and I wanna see if we can touch the backs of our shoulders. And I'm doing this because vampires wear capes, and their cape wraps around their neck and comes down on their shoulders. So when we bend our elbows like this and touch the backs of our shoulders and the tops, it almost looks like we are wearing a vampire cape. We can move left to right, show off our cape. And remember, we're thinking about standing really tall and strong. Take a deep breath in and out. We can bring our arms back up to the sky and slowly bring them down to the sides of our bodies so my hands are resting on the side of my leg. Okay, I'm gonna come back down to sitting. I'm gonna readjust my computer really fast. Okay, we have one more character to talk about before we're ready to move on. So we have one more yoga pose. And this yoga pose we're going to do on the ground, but I wanna see if anyone remembers what our last character was. And this character isn't a person, it's a thing. It's something that you'll see in real life or you could see in real life. It's round and orange and grows in the ground. <gasps> Abiel says a big fat pumpkin. Aaron says a pumpkin. Nice job, you are correct. It is a pumpkin, that's our last one. So let's think about a pumpkin. So we know pumpkins are on the ground, we're already sitting. And we talked about the shape of the pumpkin. It's round. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down. We're gonna sit back on our knees. So you bend your knees and pull your legs underneath your bottom. So you're sitting on your legs with your knees bent, okay? And we're gonna take our head and lean it all the way down until it's touching our knees, okay? And you can put your hands down on the ground to give you some support. But we're gonna bring our head down, and while you bring your head down, I want you to think about and what your back feels like. Think about what's happening to your back when you bring your head down to your knees. And we're gonna try to push our backs up a little bit and round our shoulders 
So we're coming down. I'm not sure. Let's see. I think you can see me. I might blend into the background. But my back is round like a pumpkin. So when we lay down like this with our head on our knees, you can reach your arms out in front of you if that feels good. And our back is nice and round. You're gonna take a nice deep breath in and out. Okay, our back is round like a pumpkin. And we are on the ground like a pumpkin. So I'll give everyone just a couple seconds. If you wanna take a few more deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth, kind of wiggle your shoulders. I love doing yoga because it makes me feel so good. It stretches out my muscles, it helps me relax, and it really helps me learn. I see that Abigail is trying to do these yoga poses from her chair. She's flopped over and now is giggling. It's another thing I love about yoga or any kind of movement. It doesn't have to be serious. It's fun. It's fun for all of us. And I'm kind of happy that Abigail tried to do it in her chair. I think it would be kind of hard to lay on your, sit on your knees and put your head down in a chair. I would probably fall off too. But if you're in your chair, and you don't wanna fall off, you can just focus on rounding your shoulders and tilting your head down like this. So you're just getting that really nice stretch on your neck, your shoulder, and your upper back. So now we've done yoga poses for all of the characters in our book. So we did the witch pose, where we were flying on a broomstick. We did the vampire pose where we made our big cape with our arms. We did the ghost where we stood on our knees and floated in the sky. What else did we do? The pumpkin and the mummy. Does anyone want to share their favorite yoga pose that we did today? Which one did you like the best? And I'm going to get a drink of water. I can go first while we're waiting for our friends to type in the chat. My favorite pose was the bat pose. I really liked hanging my head upside down and swaying side to side, stretched out my back, it made my neck feel good, and I really felt like a bat hanging upside down and going to sleep. Okay, Aaron said he liked the mummy. I like the mummy too. It helped me really remember that the mummy is big tall and stiff because we had our arms and legs super straight remember we weren't bending them so i felt stiff like the mummy okay logan and Haley liked the pumpkin i like the pumpkin too it's always nice when you can kind of lay down i like tucking my head under helps you rest the roundness in your back helps you stretch out. And we were able to kind of maybe feel like what it would be like to be a pumpkin in a pumpkin patch. Okay, anyone else that wants to share before we move on? Miss Paige, uh -huh. um, Abigail can't type in the chat, so she wants to tell you another one. Oh, great. You can go ahead. I like the vampire. Oh, you like the vampire? Why? I like to be tall and like to like whip that like cape around to make me feel frightened. Yeah, I like that too. That was a really nice comment, Abigail. Thank you for sharing. I'm glad you liked those. So hopefully now as we're reading our story, we can all we all have a little bit more background knowledge, right? That means we have a real experience kind of acting out these characters. So we might have a better idea of what they look like, how big they might be, if they are tall or if they're short. And so as we're reading our story, we can think back on doing the yoga poses and get a better understanding of who our characters are 
and what they're like. So now we get into the fun stuff. We get to read our book. Okay. So when I read this book to you guys, I want to make sure everyone has their listening ears on. So sometimes my listening ears aren't working that well. I have a hard time listening. So I might need to find, if you feel, just put your finger kind of right in front of your ear. I can feel a little button. And I think if I can push that button just really gently right in front of my ear and kind of twist it up, I'm turning my listening ears on. I'm reminding myself to listen to the words in the story. So can everyone take both of their pointer fingers and put them right in front of your ears. See if you can find what feels like a little button. And on the count of three, we're gonna turn them up. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Turn them up. Wow. I can listen really well now. So what we're gonna do today is you're gonna listen to me read the words of the page first. And I want you to use your imagination, listen to what I'm saying, and think about what that's gonna look like, what's happening with our characters in the story, how they might be feeling in the story, and then we'll look at the pictures and talk about it together, okay? So remember, we're reading the book. The title or the name of the book is Big Pumpkin. And the author or the person who wrote the words in the book is Erica Silverman. Okay, so our listening ears are on. I think we're ready. Once there was a witch who wanted to make pumpkin pie. So she planted a pumpkin seed. She weeded and she watered and after a while a sprout poked through the ground and then a pumpkin grew and it grew and it grew and it grew some more. Okay. Now we can look at our picture. So here is our friend, the witch. She's not flying on a broomstick right now. She is out in her garden. So she's kneeling on some grass. She's watering the dirt. And we know from listening to the words that she planted a pumpkin seed. So she's watering her pumpkin seed so it can grow and grow and grow some more. We see our witch with her long black cape, her green pointy nose, her green pointy chin, and a big pointy hat. Okay. Soon Halloween was just hours away. The witch thought about pumpkin pie, mmm, and she bent down to take her pumpkin off the vine. Oh my goodness, there is a huge pumpkin on this page. So I see a big orange pumpkin, and remember it has a stem at the top that has a vine coming down long to the ground and the pumpkin is connected to the vine and the vine is connected to the ground. So the witch is holding the vine and she, I think she's gonna try to pull it off. She has to get the pumpkin off the vine if she wants to make a jack-o-lantern. Is that what our witch said she wanted to do with the pumpkin? Can anyone tell me? I forgot. Hmm. Is the witch gonna make a jack-o-lantern with the pumpkin? Oh, Erin says no. What is she gonna do? What is she gonna do with her pumpkin? 
Abigail thinks she might decorate it. Erin <gasps> says, eat it. So Abigail, I like your comment a lot because I think if it was my pumpkin, I would want to decorate it. But Erin says, eat it. And now I remember that the witch said she wanted to make pumpkin pie. So I think she's going to eat it. And I have a pumpkin. Do you want to look at a real pumpkin before we move on? See, it's round and orange. And this pumpkin has its stem coming out of the top. It's kind of scratchy and rough, but it's already been taken off the vine. So my pumpkin's not connected to the ground. Okay, so the witch has bent down to take the pumpkin off. Well, she pulled. So we can pretend to pull in the air. You can pretend like you're grabbing onto a vine and pull back. You can pull, it means we bend our arms towards our body. And she tugged, it's another word for pull. And she pulled. First, she pulled hard. And then she pulled harder, but the pumpkin just sat. Brat, said the witch. Okay. Mm, I see our witch. She is standing next to the pumpkin and she is pulling and pulling on that pumpkin. Her pumpkin is huge. It's almost as tall as she is. But the pumpkin just sat. She cannot get it off. <gasps> just then along came a ghost. <gasps> big pumpkin, said the ghost. It's big and it's mine and it's stuck on the vine and Halloween is just hours away, said the witch. And she kicked that pumpkin. I am bigger than you and stronger too, said the ghost. Let me try. Humph! said the witch, but she thought about pumpkin pie and she stepped aside. Okay, so here is our ghost. Remember, he's flown through the air. He's floating above the ground, long and white. He's smiling. I think he's smiling because he wants to help the witch. He thinks he can get the pumpkin off the vine. Hmm, I wonder if he can do it. The ghost bent down to take the pumpkin off the vine. Okay, let's get our hands ready, because we're gonna pull. So we can reach our hands in front of us and pretend like we're pulling our pumpkin. Well, he pulled, and he tugged, and he pulled. First he pulled hard, and then he pulled harder, but the pumpkin just sat. Drat, said the ghost. So the ghost could not get the pumpkin off the vine either. He has his arms wrapped around it. His face, his eyebrows are kind of squished together and he looks like he's working really hard to pull and tug and pull. But the pumpkin is still on the vine. Just then, along came a vampire. <laughs> Big a pumpkin, said the vampire. It's big and it's mine and it's stuck on the vine and Halloween is just hours away, said the witch and she kicked that pumpkin. I am bigger than both of you and stronger too. Let me try, said the vampire. Humph, said the witch. Humph, said the ghost, but they thought about pumpkin pie and they stepped aside. All right, let's look at our vampire. Oh, there he is. He does look big and strong. He is kneeling down, looking at the pumpkin. The ghost and the witch have their hands on their hips. They said, humph, I don't think he can do it. But that vampire looks big and strong. I bet he could do it. I think he's gonna get it off the vine. Okay, we're gonna get our hands ready because it's the vampire's turn to pull and tug. So he's gonna bend down to take the pumpkin off the vine. He's gonna put his hands in front of him. Whoa, he pulled, let's pull back. And he tugged and he pulled. First he pulled hard and then he pulled harder. But the pumpkin just sat. Drat, said the vampire. 
he couldn't do it either. We don't have very many characters left. I really hope that they get the pumpkin off the vine. Okay. I think I forgot to show you the picture and talk about the picture. Hold on. So the vampire, oh my gosh, he has his feet up on the pumpkin and his hands on the vine, pulling and tugging and pulling. I'm looking at his face and his eyes are closed and his mouth is kind of scrunched up. He looks like he's working so hard. And even though he's really big and really strong, he couldn't get it off either. Just then, along came a, let's see if we remember. This is our character with the big stiff arms. A mummy. Hmm. Big pumpkin, said the mummy. It's big and it's mine and it's stuck on the vine and Halloween is just hours away, said the witch. Hmm. And she kicked that pumpkin. I am bigger than all of you said the mummy, and much stronger too. Let me try. Humph, said the witch. Humph, said the ghost. Humph, said the vampire. But they thought about pumpkin pie. Mm, it sounds so good. And they stepped aside. So let's see if the mummy can do it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm looking at this mummy. That mummy is huge, way bigger than the vampire, way bigger than the ghost. And look, the witch is so small compared to the mummy. They're all standing in a line and the mummy is pointing at the pumpkin. Remember, our mummy's really big, really tall, all wrapped in white bandages. Let's see if he can get it off the vine. The mummy bent down to take the pumpkin off the vine. Well, oh, and our mummy's a girl. I didn't realize, I was saying he, but it's a she because she is a girl. So the mummy bent down to take the pumpkin off the vine and she, ready, get those hands ready in front of you. We're gonna pretend like we're squeezing on the vine and we're gonna pull and we're gonna tug and she's gonna pull. First, she pulled hard, and then she pulled harder, but the pumpkin just sat. Drat, said the mummy. She couldn't get it either, and she was the biggest, strongest one. I don't know about you guys, but I, I don't think they're gonna be able to get the pumpkin off the vine. Just then, along came a bat. Big pumpkin, said the bat. The witch didn't say a word. She just looked at the ghost and rolled her eyes. The ghost looked at the vampire. The vampire looked at the mummy. They all looked at the little bat. <laughs> and they started to laugh. <laughs> he thinks he can get the pumpkin off the vine. He's tiny. The bat is so small. The bat is not strong. Even the big strong mummy couldn't get the pumpkin off the vine. <laughs> How is the little bat gonna do it? I may not be big and I may not be strong, said the bat, but I have an idea. And the bat, he's gonna tell him what to do. So he's gonna whisper. So I'm gonna put both of my hands on the side of my mouth and make a whisper sound like So the bat's whispering to all of the other characters. Humph, said the witch. Humph, said the ghost. Humph, said the vampire. Humph, said the mummy. I don't know, are they gonna do what the bat tells them to do? They thought about pumpkin pie and they said, let's give it a try. Okay, let's look. Oh no, in this picture, our tiny bat is in the sky and the mummy and the vampire and the ghost and the witch are pointing at him and laughing. <laughs> Too small, he can't do it. And that big pumpkin is still on the vine. So they're gonna give it a try. Ready, set, pull! 
we'll call the bat. So the bat pulled the mummy. The mummy pulled the vampire. So we can practice pulling with our own hands. The vampire pulled on the ghost. The ghost pulled the witch and the witch pulled the pumpkin. Well, they pulled and they tugged and they pulled. First they pulled hard and then they pulled even harder. <gasps> and, oh, look at that. So now in our picture, we can see they're all pulling the pumpkin together. So it's not just one character doing it by themselves. The witch is pulling the pumpkin and then the ghost pulls the witch. The vampire pulls the ghost, the mummy pulls the vampire, and the bat pulls the mummy. So now they're all doing it together. I think that little bat might be onto something. What do we think? Does anyone want to say really quick if they think this plan is going to work? Is the bat's plan going to work? Are they going to get that pumpkin off the vine? Ooh, Abigail hopes so. Me too, Abigail. I really hope so. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed because they have a big pumpkin. So they're pulling and pulling harder and snap <gasps> off came the pumpkin. Drat, said the witch. Whoosh, it flew through the air <gasps> and oh my gosh, look at that. I can see our pumpkin. Our pumpkin got pulled so hard and snapped off the vine that our big orange pumpkin is flying in the air. So we can see the pumpkin in the air in front of those nighttime clouds. Remember, they're really dark. There's stars in the sky. And the bat and the mummy and the vampire and the ghost and the witch have all fallen down. The mummy's upside down. They're falling on the ground because they pulled so hard. So remember it went whoosh. So we can look with a real pumpkin. Our big pumpkin is flying in the air. And thumpity thump thump thumpity thump thump thump. It landed on a hill and rolled down. Bounce, 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 bounce. All the way down to the witch's house. And when it got to the door, that pumpkin just sat. Hooray for the bat, called the witch, and she hurried inside to make pumpkin pie. So now the background has changed a little bit. We're not up by the grass and the dirt anymore. We are at the witch's house. It looks kind of spooky. There's a black roof. I can see one window upstairs with a yellow light inside. There's a porch on the front that's kind of a dark gray. And that pumpkin is so big. It's sitting on the front porch and it's almost covering the door. So the witch and the ghost and the vampire and the mummy and the bat are coming down the hill following the pumpkin so the witch can go inside and make pumpkin pie. Mmm. Mmm, said the ghost. Have some more, said the witch. Couldn't eat another bite, said the vampire. Unparty, said the mummy. Time to go, said the bat. So look, we are inside of the witch's house. I see a candle on the wall, a spider web up at the top of the ceiling. And the vampire and the mummy and the ghost and the witch are standing around the table eating pumpkin pie. Mmm. And I can see our big pumpkin pie sitting on the table. They baked that in a pie dish. And because our pumpkin was so big, that pie is so big. So I'm going to show you guys a pie dish. So this is what I would make pumpkin pie in. So my pie dish is round. So the bottom of the pie will be a circle, but at the top, do you guys see how it's kind of wavy? 
So I'm running my fingers along. It starts round on the bottom. The sides come up. And if you listen, I can tap it. It makes a little sound. So we have the wavy top, and that's what gives the shape to our pumpkin pie crust. So this is our pie dish. And you might see one of those when you eat pie or make pies at some point in your life. <gasps> Drat, said the witch as she watched them all leave. Hmm. And then she went right out and planted another pumpkin seed. So this is our last page of the book. The witch said, Drat. I think she was saying Drat because all of her friends had to leave. The party's over. So she's planting another pumpkin seed outside. Hmm. I wonder why she wants to do that. What do you guys think? Why do you think she wants to plant a pumpkin again? Well, I think we're gonna let them think about that. Okay. That is a really good question. And I wonder how many people now wanna go eat pumpkin pie. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have to let everyone go, Paige, but I want to say thank you so much. This has been fabulous. I loved the story and all of the movements, and I hope to see you back with us at the Academy soon. Oh, thanks so much for having me, and thanks to all my friends for coming out today. It was so much fun.